Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mission BX. Mission BX is a collaboration between BronxNet and the Center for Bronx Nonprofits at Hostos Community College. We talk to people in all sorts of nonprofits all over the Bronx. And today we're going to be visiting a very, very special person, Joe Conzo Joe Senior, who, as you will see, has a wealth of knowledge about Latin music and wants to share it with all of us. So I know you're going to enjoy the time with Joe. Welcome, everybody, and today is an exciting day because we're going to be speaking with Joe Conzo. Um, many of you probably who are watching this probably know Joe, um, but for those of you who don't, how do I even describe Joe? He is um, uh, an amazing mind filled with information about Latin music. He teaches, he has written a book or books. And so we're going to have a, a great conversation with him. And, and the first thing um, I want to ask you about, Joe, is your own background. How did you how did you get into all of this? How did you start studying it? It's not just a, a scholar and, and, and with amazing knowledge, but also an archivist who has a tremendous collection of, um, of musical, I would imagine music of all sorts of, at this point, um, because we have changed the way we listen to music. So, so how did this all start, Joe? And, and welcome and thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, first of all, let's correct something. It's Joe Conzo Sr. Oh, right. Because oh. Joey, Joey, my son, has been on your, your show, and, and he's known as Junior, and he's an artist in his own right with hip-hop music and so forth. I st I'm a frustrated conga player, and I started uh, with the Palladium Ballroom in the late 50s, following my cousins and the way I grew up, and that's the way music was. And I became, uh, uh, in, I fell in love with Tito Puente. Let me put it to you that way. His music fascinated me. And uh, in 1959, I met Tito Puente at the Palladium, the famous home of the Mambo and Cha Cha Cha. And then on my way to Korea, Tito was a very humble person. I met him again in Japan at the USO. And he kept telling me, I know you. And I said, I know you. I told him I met him in the, in the Palladium in 1959. And uh, I'm a firm believer in destiny. His oldest son went to school with my sister. I'm the oldest. And Tito's widow, Margie Puente, and I grew up together in the South Bronx, even though I'm a product of Harlem. But later on, we grew up in the South Bronx. And it, it was a love for this music that you couldn't get away from it. It was fascinating. And I wrote a book on Tito. I, I got to a point that I got so close to him in almost 40, 50 years that we were together before he passed. I mean, he didn't trust nobody. He was a person from the streets, but I admired him and everything like I'm from the streets, but he was a genius to see him and to talk to him and understand him, it was it was it was unbelievable. Shoot! Wow. So uh, that you know, listening to talk, I felt like I want to see that. I I I can picture the Palladium and picture uh, what that was all about. But that must have been an incredibly exciting time. And and I and I'm sorry about the, the missing the senior because I I do know that your son is quite accomplished in his own right so uh, which is I'm sure something you're very proud of um, the so the the next question I have is so you that's how you began 
And then years went by, but but you didn't just you weren't just involved with music and and writing a book and and playing, but you also have this enormous collection of music, and you are somebody who speaks about music. Um, so so two parts of this question: one, how did all that happen? And two, how did you get involved with the wonderful class that you run at Hostos? Okay. My collection, my collection was over 50,000 LPs, and I donated that collection. Follow my lead. It's recordings, LPs. And I donated that to Cornell University, and that, that was something to my son, Joey. But I kept all the live stuff, and what makes it important about live music is I do research. I have over 7,000 live recordings of Tito Puente, Tito Rodriguez, Machito. When you talk about live, you see people look at albums, that's 12 tunes. But if you start mathematizing the tunes, it's 12 tunes times so much. Right. These are live recordings, which are even longer. And these are recordings that a lot of recordings Tito never released. Tito Rodriguez, which I'm going to do on November 11th at Hostos. We're paying tribute to Tito Rodriguez at, at Hostos Community College. And I'm going to be playing music of Tito Rodriguez that was never released. So these are things that I've collected through the years. And that's the biggest problem we have with the colleges and with the school. They don't teach music in schools anymore. And the colleges, they just teach about the instrument. Great, teach them about the instrument, but teach them about where it comes from, the history of it, the culture. You know, a lot of our music, Latin music comes from Africa, the mother country. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids, they call it salsa today, which is what you used to cook, I used to cook, which is tomato sauce. Tito hated that that phrase because they think about it. Eileen, let's go salsa mambo. You look at me and say, Joe, that's not proper English. Let's go salsa. But it became a word easy for the Anglos to pronounce. They couldn't pr pronounce Wawanko Guaracha. Mm. So Hostos College, I got involved with Hostos College with your fellow chancellor or fellow Matos, Felix mm. Matos. And uh, he, uh, when, when Tito died, I had donated my collection of memorabilia to the college. And uh, I came to him and I suggested that we do a class. He made me an offer and I counted the offer. And lo and behold, I, I started teaching. And uh, Margie Puente, uh, Lorraine Montenegro, Joey's mother, and Robert Sancho, they became my sponsors. And I've been doing it for the last 16, 17 years. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, so I do it now virtually. But I like it. I like it doing virtually, doing things virtual. It opens a bigger audience. I get them from Puerto Rico, Colombia, South America, Peru, uh, Berkeley College, which I have a professor, Eggy Castillo, who teaches there, a professor, and he joins in. And I got people from all walks of life, Tito Puente Jr., uh, Machito Jr., Tito Puente, Rodriguez Jr., they all join. And what's great about it is that we all ad lib and we could talk about this. And I show a lot of videos, videos mm -hmm. uh, of Puente, as you said you wanted to see. Unfortunately, you couldn't, you couldn't record at the Palladium, could do recordings, but Max Hyman didn't allow videos. Uh, there's, there's no videos of the police. But I have videos of, of all of them, Puente, Machito, Cuban videos, uh, the Find Your All Stars, and we, we show them. You know, that's important. Okay. So that, so I'm so fascinated by, because I remember when you started to do that class remotely, and nobody really knew how that was going to work out because none of us knew how anything was going to work out remotely. But but the idea that now it's become an international class 
is really exciting and it must be incredible for people to be able to to who never would have an opportunity to talk with you um, if they had to come to the class, but now from all over the world can can listen to you talk about what what not just the music, but what your life has been with the music. That's one of the most wonderful things that that you've lived a life with with this as part of of the fiber of who you are, which makes it very, very exciting for everybody. So so I would love to have you talk about there we know about the class but let's talk about when that how people we we have the we're going to incorporate the link for people to get to the class but um but can you can you talk about when the class starts and how long it lasts and also about a little bit more about the events that I know that you have two events I think beyond the class coming up so can you just um, talk a little bit more about that okay the other advantage about my class, uh, first of all, I start this Saturday, and you have the links. I do it for eight weeks. And uh, the advantage that I have about teaching this class, which is all over the world, and Joey is the one that told me, Dad, you're, you're known all over the world. Uh, yeah. I looked at him like I said, okay, fine. Yeah, to me, <laughs> I'm still Joe Conzo. But... Uh, the advantage I've had over most people is I hung out with these guys. I didn't take pictures with them. I hung out with them. I mean, how many people can say they went to Tito Puente's house? They ran into Tito Rodriguez in the street with Tito Puente, or they spoke to Machito or went to Machito's house, or Fajardo from Puerto, from Cuba. You know, mm. the advantage I've had is that. And they come to me and they'll ask me questions. A perfect example is Gilberto Santa Rosa, who's one of our greatest singers known the world over, who's coming directly from Puerto Rico to do a tribute to Tito Rodriguez on the 11th, 12th, and 13th of November at Hostos Community College. Okay. This guy is like a sponge. He's always asking me questions. He'll ask other people that lived that period. And Dandy Rodriguez was going to be part of that. His father was part of the, the old school. And Delta Hilberto would ask Dandy a question. Dandy will answer it. He says, really? And then he says, ask hey, Joe. Because we lived it. We hung out with these guys. And that's the advantage that I have. And, and uh, you also have the link for the uh, college, uh, for uh, the, the event that's happening at Holstos. Right. And it's moving right along. That already the tickets are on sale. It's Tito Rodriguez Jr. who's going to back up uh, Gilberto Santa Rosa and his orchestra. And uh, it's, it's a great privilege. I'm, I'm one of the hosts of the event. And it's something we did. We started off with Tito Puente in 2017. And then in 2019, we did Machito. Because of the pandemic, we couldn't do Tito Rodriguez. So it turned out now we're doing Tito Rodriguez because the pandemic, you could say, more or less is over. So, you know, yeah. and, uh, and we're basically we're saving the best for last. It turned out that way because we're bringing Alberto Santa Rosa who agreed to do it from mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. We have to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and then I'm going to ask you to tell me a couple of the most wonderful performances that you you ever saw. So we're back with Joe Conzo Sr., um, who has been talking about his, I think we could only call it a love affair, with Latin music and with, with some of the amazing musicians that he actually grew up with and grew up around. And so what I'm asking him to tell us is some of his most exciting experiences watching performances or being around performances, whether it's in theater, whether they were in theaters or as I said, in somebody's living room. So, Joe, what? Well, some of the most memorable memorable uh, things that I remember. One, I met Frank Sinatra with Tito Puente. Wow. Uh, 
Um, uh, Tito Puente was the first to play at Studio 54, the Latin band. And I was with him and Margot Hemingway and Mario Hemingway, the sisters and the granddaughters of Ernest Hemingway. Being in a recording studio with Tito Puente and Tito Puente telling the producer, there's something missing. Get me some uh, music paper. And Tito, uh, Tito telling the producer, Louis Ramirez, and everybody, don't let me let anybody go in that room. And he's telling me not even to let the producer in there. And he says, not even my mother. His mother had passed away. And Tito coming back 20 minutes later and says, Joe, give this to Jimmy. He wrote a score in 20 minutes. That's something unheard of, to see this man do things, uh, to be in, 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 uh, in the uh, office that he had. 1674 Broadway with Charlie Palmieri and Joe Loco, mm. two two other musicians, uh, and all three of them listening to music, all types of music, and then stopping and saying, that guy was off. He was out of key. I said, you got to be kidding. With the, or going, leaving, the, uh, leaving his office and walking down the street and running into Tito Rodriguez, which most writers and producers said they were mortal enemies. And I would tell you, I come to Tito Rodriguez. <laughs> They'd stop and talk. It was an issue one time. T. Rodriguez even offered me a job in front of Tito Puente because he had a record company. And this was basically uh, publicity stunts. They, they were friends. They grew up together. Just being around him, mm. especially when it came to music, uh, was, was was fascinating. Celia Cruz was fascinating. Mm. La Lupe, Graciela, the our first lady of song, Graciela. I mean, these are uh, was something to be around these people. No bodyguards. Mm -hmm. Celia would say, the fans made me. I don't need no bodyguard. Puente was the same way. I remember we played at Orchard Beach. The cops said, well, Tito, we're going to sign these two guys. He says, to do what? Oh, they have to watch you. And Tito said, I don't need nobody watching. I got Joe and I got the rest of this beach watching me. Just like that. Huh. And that's how down to earth today. I've always said the same thing, that uh, Stevie Wonder was a, was a person that had somebody to guide him because he was blind, very down to earth. But most of these guys today, J-Lo and all these people, like, yeah, it's another world. But they got a million gorillas by, mm -hmm. taking care of them. To this day, if Celia was still alive at Tito, they'd still be walking the streets like nothing. I mean, the last thing I did with Tito was before he passed, where we went to the Grammys. And, mm -hmm. and he learned to be at the Grammys, the American Grammys. And we're walking down a corridor and there were rooms, like little rooms in this hotel. And to see Clive Davis, hey, Tito! Clive Davis would discover Whitney Houston. Houston yeah. Or Willie Nelson, country and western, the king. Hey, Tito, and they start talking. And in my mind, I said, you gotta be kidding. It's Willie Nelson. Neil Diamond. I mean, Barbara Walters. Let me give you a little tidbit. I'm talking about research. Tito played at, at the Latin Quarter, which was on 48th Street. And that was Barbara Walters' father's place. It's called the Latin Quarter in 1948. And Tito and I at Radio City Music Hall, a tribute to Martin Luther King for his birthday. There's Cap Calloway with uh, Dion Warwick and Barbara Walters. Everybody says, where's Tito? I said, they're talking to each other with Barbara Walters and reminiscing. She was a baby and she remembered Tito when he played there. There's little things like that that people say, you're kidding. I said, no, I saw these things, you know. And then to appear in a movie with Tito Wente. You know, I did the Mambo Kings. I'd kill a guy in the Mambo Kings. And to do Carlito's Way with Al Pacino. And to see Tito come on the set of Carlito's Way, which I brought him, it's those little things that people say, you're kidding. No, you're not part of this. I was part of this. 
So. Wow, that those are amazing stories. And and I can tell and the audience is going to be able to tell how much they mean to you and how much of the fiber of who you are. All of these people were so. So now you have so you gave some of of what you're you had collected to Cornell. But but if what is it that you want to to leave as a legacy for the work that you've done? So it's it's I would think that it's not just that there's a collection somewhere, but but you have done more than just collect. You've promoted and 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 shared and taught. So what for you is the piece that really matters now and that that you hope continues? Well, the most important thing is 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 anything archival. That that should be uh, I donated the Tio Puente collection is, is the only college in the United States or the world for that matter that has this collection, which three quarters of it is mine. Uh, the Museum of Music in Arizona, Tio Puente, there's his pictures, his sticks, plus the book I wrote, plus Celia Cruz. That's in Arizona. What I would like to leave, don't forget, my live recordings are much more important than recordings. Anybody can buy albums. I'm buying albums again. I'm rebuilding my collection again. Um, people give me collection. People give what they do give me is Eileen, you, anybody. We're all collectors. We're all historians. Right. right. And when I used to teach the class, they would bring cassettes to me or make a DVD and. They say, hey, Joe, we, I found this, I found that. And on my way home, I would put it in the car. Uh, I said, you got to be good. There was an incident. I was looking for a dance song by Orchestra Broadway. I called the leader of Orchestra Broadway. Did you ever record this live? He says, Joe, we did it once or twice, but I don't have a copy. One day, this collector, another musician, says, Joe, here. It's, it's, it's Orchestra Broadway at the Corso and a typical idea, I'm, I'm listening to, do you know, he puts down song, no name. I'm on the highway, I had to pull over because it was this down song I was looking for. He didn't know what it was, I knew what it was. I said, you gotta be kidding. I made a copy and I sent it to the leader of Broadway. He says, Joe, what did you, I said, one of the kids gave it to me. And that's what we do. I think the most important thing, Eileen, is, is archival stuff is to continue teaching our culture. Without our culture, we're nothing. I mean it. Without our, the kids today, I tell kids, even before they put the picture of Tio, the story, uh, Tio Puente's name in the college, I used to tell the kids, you know what that is? They look at me. They say, no, an old man, an old man. I said, you ever hear Santana? Oh, yeah, yeah. I said, you ever hear the tune? Oh, yeah, come on. They say, yes, yes, yes. I said, he wrote it. Mm -hmm. You're kidding. And that's what I'm trying to say. You you, you, you have to see what's, what's going on in the world, continue our culture, whether it's Jewish, Italian, mm -hmm. Latin, whatever. We have to, if we lose our culture, we're nothing. And right now, I don't get into politics. I just mentioned, you see what's going on in the world. Mm. You see what's going on in this country. Mm. It's, it's divided. But we have to, we have to, you know, Tito, how many people knew that Tito played the vibe of heart? He was the first to play the vibes in Latin music in 1949. People said, you're kidding. No. Yeah, I mean, it's those little things. He played in, in jazz. He created Latin jazz. Machito was the first to do it in 1943, but Tito kept it up. And it's those little things that my papers, my book is most, Mambo Diablo, my journey with Tito Puente, it talks about everything from A to Z, my marriages, drugs, <laughs> everything. But it talks about 
the genius of Tito that I saw. The Miguelito Valdez, not Desianes, the one who sang Babalu, the Machitos, uh -huh. all to hang out with these people and hang out with Desianes. And to read about how I told Desianes to go for himself, where he was so <laughs> drunk and had words with me. I told him where to go. And the owner of the nightclub said, they knew me. They they escorted him out. And I was a good boy, you know. I mean, okay. it's those little things that that I yeah. have that I'm out to share. And Joey's been a good part of it. Joey, Joey is mostly on hip hop. He wrote a book, Born in the Bronx. But Joey was my tail. I used to drag him with me. And he <laughs> takes They'd stop him. No, no, that's Joe Conzo's son. Oh, okay, good. Take all the pictures. So, uh, but that's that's what my legacy. I would like for that legacy, and you know, to continue doing what I'm doing with you, and just talk about it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, another person is a guy like Bobby Sanabria, uh, mm -hmm. who was a hell of a musician. He gives you an overview about the instruments. He gives, but he knows I lived it. He gets it because he played with some of these musicians. Right. Talking to other musicians is one thing. <laughs> Being with them and seeing it is another. It's a whole thing. Yeah. So. And being at Radio City Music Hall and all these places, and, yeah. or the Jay Leno show, or, or the, the Jack, uh, what was it, the Letterman show, and Bill Cosby, even though, you know, he's a bad word, but Bill yeah. Cosby to see. And to see a guy like R.J., uh, uh, Natalie Wood's ex-husband, what oh, yeah. what's his name? Robert yeah, Wagner. Come up to Tito. Robert Wagner. Tito, how you doing? This is on the Letterman show, outside. And they're talking to each other. And to see other, other musicians. Emmy Lou Harris, who I love because of her white hair. B.B. <laughs> King, when he won the Grammys. I mean, we're all there. And Tony Bennett with him and... They both started uh, together. They started July 4th, 1949. Tito Puente and the Mambo Boys and Antonio Benedetto. Anthony Benedetto. And that was Tony right, Bennett. Right, right. At the Patio Club, August, uh, July 4th, 1949. Right. I, mean, I mean, these are things, that's because I know the dates because of the research. But to yeah. see these guys, he came to Tito's funeral, Tony Bennett. I mean, other people did, Amanda Santa, yeah. which we did the movie. I mean, these, these are things to see, you know, and to yeah. talk about. And those are memories that you can't get no more. Thank you, thank and you, I mean, thank you. Thank you, and have a beautiful day. Sorry that's all the time we had with Joe. I know we could have spent a lot more time, but hopefully there will be another opportunity. If you missed any part of this and want to see it again or want to see it again, you can just go on bronxnet.tv and look for Mission BX. And make sure to catch us next time when we once again talk to somebody doing extraordinary work in the Bronx. <laughs> I am in the door, just in time to take it, don't play around with it.